Hi, I'm Dave Thomas with Cars.com, and the Mustang we have here is as American as apple pie. But over the past few years, it's gotten, well, a little stale. Now, don't get me wrong, I love bare bones muscle cars as much as the next guy, but the 2014 it hasn't improved much on the 2013, or the 2012 that came before that, or even the 2011 when this 5.0 liter V8 was introduced. Why? Because this version of the V8 only has eight more horsepower than the one in 2011. Luckily, 412, 420 horsepower, doesn't really matter what Mustang you get from the past few years, it's a blast to drive. Launching off the line, tires screeching, exhaust bellowing, that's what this car is all about, and it gets the formula down perfect. Don't expect too much out of the Mustang when you take a turn, especially in convertible form. The chassis is loose and the car bottom heavy, not a formula for carving corners. And with this much power at the rear wheels, you always have to pay attention to the back end coming loose, whether you mean it to or not. The gas station will be a place you will frequently turn into, however. The Mustang's rated at 15 miles per gallon city, 26 miles per gallon highway with this V8. But in my own bumper to bumper commute and open road suburban driving, the Mustang returned 12 miles per gallon, barely. I just tested a 550 horsepower Mercedes SUV that was getting nearly 13 miles per gallon in similar driving. And most of the time, I had this baby's top down and the air off. Inside, the Mustang isn't stuck in 2011 more like 2005 when this generation debuted. And while there's a lot to say about the performance of this car, it can't be said for the interior refinement or ergonomics. The black plastic feels cheap. It's everywhere. This cubby pops open at the slightest touch. When you shift, you're hitting your drink all the time. The stereo, it's ancient. How do they cram so many buttons into the steering wheel? There's nowhere to store anything out in the open. But the seats are really comfortable, and that's important for a car you'll likely take cruising with the top down. And what about the top? I'm not going to complain about a convertible muscle car with a soft top roof taking 16 seconds to put down, or the fact that you have to use manual latches to close it all the way. Even I can handle that much inconvenience for a retro ride like this. What other positives are there? The trunk is relatively big for a convertible. At 9.6 cubic feet, it actually ranks behind the Camaro convertible when you look at the numbers, but I don't buy it. The Camaro's trunk shouldn't even be called a trunk, maybe a compartment. The Mustang's is much roomier. One other thing it has going for it that just can't be denied is the undying appeal of the Mustang's styling. And little touches that have been added like ponies in the puddle lamps are a great touch. The 2014 is a mixed bag, that's for sure, especially with the new generation coming out sometime next year. The folks who should be lining up for this one are those that do want a bare bones muscle car because in the next one, it might be too modern. 